Good evening. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Gisela Di Carlo, and I'm glad that you could join me tonight. Uh, our subject tonight will be about to vaccinate or not to vaccinate. That is the question. Um, any of you guys who have pets or uh, cats or dogs, um, and even horses um, have had that dilemma that you've had. Um, I'm sure every time that you go to your vet, uh, the vet wants to vaccinate again. Um, there are good arguments for it, and there are also good arguments against it. Uh, the common opinion holds that the vaccines are harmless. Uh, that wisdom is rarely questioned, uh, by, and it's surprising. Um, you go to the vet, and uh, the first thing the vet says, "Oh, let me see if he's up to date to your to the." And we and we have a new vaccine that we I think we should administer. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, what these vaccines will do and what um, how it affects your animal. But I really would like to encourage all of you who are listening to uh, call in with your questions. A, it makes it for a livelier show, and B, I want you to understand that um, this is an open forum. Uh, I would like to, I do my research, um, and I have, um, I am a homeopathist, as you know, and I treat animals, and I do see a lot of animals with vaccination problems. Um, to vaccinate is, is seen as a greater guarantee of good health. And since uh, the vets would always, uh, when you go to a vet, well, what do you mean you don't want to vaccinate? Uh, your uh, dog against uh, Lyme disease and um, uh, all several other uh, diseases that they are vaccinating now against. Uh, and they make you really sort of feel guilty. Oh, you're not a good um, pet owner if you don't vaccinate. But I do encourage you to really um, have your own judgment in that. The um, other thing is that rabies, um, it, it is a law to vaccinate for rabies. Um, but if you have your doctor, your veterinarian, uh, draw a syringe of blood and see if the titers are still there, that's what they're called, if the protection is still there of the rabies shot, uh, if you go to a vet that is more, a little bit more enlightened, um, they will then say, okay, we don't need to give the rabies shot. So do stay within the law for rabies because it is a very serious um, disease for pets and for people if you get bitten or even scratched from a rabies uh, dog, you can be in serious trouble. Guess so... Yes, so I have. I yes. have a question about this. Yeah, that when you go and you get the rabies shot, they give yeah. you a little uh, thing to tag. Put, tag. Yeah. Now that tag mm -hmm. expires. Yeah, one year. So if you go and to the vet and they check and they see that they don't, there's no reason to do it. Right. Then you the, have to give. Then you have to talk to your vet and say, "Listen, you know, uh, keep me, give me the um, Tider um, uh, certificate. They, they, it's a little certificate that they give you that says that the dog is still protected with the last rabies okay. shot. They're also, they're also, which is not anymore as often. Once you have given a puppy the first." Uh, shot, then there has to be a booster shot for that. I normally always ask them to give them the five year shot because there's a five year shot that you that they don't like to give anymore because I mean, just 
think about it. It's a fabulous thing. They have maybe um, 150 clients, a veterinarian, and once a year they come in for their shots uh, 150 times. It's a, it's a great little money maker. Um, but there is a five year shot. And do not have them give you the combination shots because there's a combination shot that uh, is rabies, distemper, and uh, one other. I, it's not the, on the, the top of my mind right now. The thing that uh, you give them when they go to, uh, to stay with other dogs, what is it? Uh, distemper. No, there's one that is... Oh, the a kennel cough. Yeah. Kennel cough. Yeah. Kennel cough, they give you also... They give also a shot for that. Yeah. Um, yes. And they give a Lyme disease shot. And they give a, um, which, by the way, does not work. The Lyme disease shot is a total waste of money. And a total, um, it really, really is not good for the animal to have that many, many vaccinations. Uh, even some holistic veterinarians are saying that the vaccinations are the leading killer of dogs and cats today. All dogs, however, must be given the rabies and vaccine. Uh, vaccine. Uh, but it is a leading killer. And I have had several numerous dogs uh, in my care that uh, had problems, health problems, major health problems, because of the frequent vaccinations. They are given, if they're given every year, a va the whole battery of vaccinations, which many, many people do because the vets want to give that. And then when they get sick, uh, you go to the vet again, you know? So there's a continuous, there's a residual income from those vaccinations. So uh, not always a good idea. Uh, the, after the first weeks of life in a puppy and a kitten, they gain protection from the disease with the first vaccination temporarily from their mother's milk also. So don't ever vaccinate a cat especially cats, not too early, you know, not, not under six months and the dog, not under six months. I would not, um, although, although there was for many years, there was, we had a lot of problems with porvo uh, virus and the porvo virus, I had myself a couple of dogs uh, that almost died from porvo virus. And it seems like I haven't seen it very much around because they have been uh, vaccinations for it. And also these uh, viruses often um, die out, you know, when there is not very much of a host and they have a lifespan and then they do die out. But um, the povo virus in a very small animal, I think is a good idea. Distemper also in a, in a very small animal. But then once they are getting older and they have a strong immune system and you feed them uh, a good healthy diet and the immune system is kept strong by a frequent exercise, um, a stress-free life and good food, you should, you should never ever have to really vaccinate again. Um, if many animals, like I have a, my little um, poodle, my little black poodle, let me get him here. Oh, come on. There is TC, and TC almost died because of over vaccination. He was so, and he still has a lot of problems, um, allergy problems, and so on, because his immune system is not very strong. And even though I have, I have, um, you know, I'm on on a holistic diet, on a raw diet, 
Um, I treat him with homeopathy, but his immune, once the immune system is wrecked, it's really very, very hard to rebuild that. Um, a healthy animal or person with a good, strong immune system is more than capable of fighting off viruses and bacteria when exposed to them. This is what the immune system is for. So, you know, think about it. I'm not saying do not. I'm just saying use very, very um, common sense. Naturally, a, a animal that is already sick, and I have seen this, I have gone with, with pets that were brought to me uh, to the veterinarian because we wanted to do some tests because usually when an animal is presented to me and I don't see right away what could be wrong, I then often urge um, the client to go to the vet and have a panel of blood tests and urine and fecal tests because I can't perform that. Um, if the client wants me to, I go with them, and often they do. And I see, I see, and I have seen vets that here the dog was definitely in poor health, so not feeling good, uh, saying, oh, well, we have to give the vaccination. And I would look at them and say, are you, you know, do you think that that is absolutely necessary? I, you know, the dog is not not even able to build the antibodies uh, in this condition. You know, they have already a stressed immune system. Why put this dog under more stress? If you feel you must give your dog the vaccination, then wait until the dog is healthy again. And that is what what my my point there is. An older dog, I see, I see animals that are 13, 14 years old. Oh, they have to have their yearly booster shot. Why? If, if they have had 13 shots, 13 years, every year shot, don't you think they build up immune system, their immune system and the immunity to that particular, to distemper or to even to rabies? Um, if they don't, then I don't know what the vaccines are for. Um, a vaccine should be really holding uh, the animal for a lo much longer. And that goes for people as much as it goes, it goes for animals too, you know. Um, I mean... <sighs> Don't try to fool Mother Nature. I mean, since a healthy body is a proper functioning of all its parts, it follows that if we stimulate one part, it will diminish another. Maintaining a healthy uh, balance of all body systems guarantees overall health. To target the immune system for boosting will ultimately result in ill health somewhere down the line. And that is especially, especially where, with cancer. You see, I see so many animals now that have cancer. It's really amazing. I just very much so like, like um, our, um, with people, you know, animals are also uh, having cancer. Um, cancer very simply does not exist in an animal or a person with a strong immune system and overall good health. You can't, you can't be cancer ridden if you have a very strong immune system and very good health. And that is the main thing. Keep, stay healthy. Eat wholesome good food. Do not stress this, your immune system. Do not stress your system so much to the point of that it is going into an overdrive of um, to protect itself. 
if you do uh, give your uh, animals vaccinations, then do support it that way. Do everything you can to strengthen the immune system before and after. Cleanse the liver and educate yourself about how to do that. Um, we just constantly just um, trust our medical system and we know we cannot do that without questioning. We just can't do that anymore. It is way too um, entrenched in making money rather than taking care. Now, I'm not saying that um, all doctors and all veterinarians are evil and all they are is money ogres. No, they're not. Um, I, my friend who is a vet, she is a very, very caring and nice person. And um, she herself says too, you know, because I don't vaccinate my animals other than when they were babies. And if I didn't get them as babies, then, well, that's it. They're not getting another vaccination. I keep, I try to keep their system as healthy as possible. And she knows that I do. And therefore, um, she doesn't, you know, but on the other hand, she says, well, hey, listen, you know, this is our bread and butter. This is how, how we make the money. That's how we um, see that uh, our, you know, the bills are paid. Um, so if you have any questions, this is a good time to ask them. Um, you know, and we'll look, uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit of what signs to look for when you, when you uh, um, have an animal that is not in its optimum. And we know most of the time, they start moping around, right? So I don't, you know, often I get a call and somebody says, I don't think my dog is feeling very well. It seems like he might have a virus. Well, um, viruses are not as often and as not as frequent as uh, we think. Sometimes, I mean, I saw yesterday a dog uh, who lost uh, his, um, his buddy, you know, his older buddy who he has lived with for the last few years. Um, had to be put down because he was too old and he was just he was way over 16 and he was a large dog and that was the dog had a very very good life and he just couldn't support his hind end anymore and um, he lost control of everything and even though we kept him for quite some time uh still rather happy um you know, finally, um, it was time to say goodbye to him. Well, this little puppy who was with him, or not a puppy, but um, a smaller dog, um, was just so sad and so moping, wouldn't, didn't want to eat, didn't want to, didn't even want to get up. And so on. so I went over and I brought some homeopathic remedy, Ignatia, uh, that deals with grief and um, we gave him a couple of doses of that and not that he jumped all over the place and was happy again but he got up and um, we encouraged him to go outside again so there was no virus involved but um, the owner was like oh my god he's getting sick and so no he was just grieving you know and um like I've said many times before, our animals also have, um, they, they feel the same way as, as we do, although they show it often differently. But when they, when they get a little mopey and they don't eat, um, and uh, a good sign is, um, if there is a, if there is really something going on like a virus or that they are getting really seriously ill is often they display a fever and you can tell a fever if the ears are very hot, the nose gets dry and hot and they start panting 
And it's a good time to just use a thermometer and use a little Vaseline and uh, take the temperature. The temperature should be about 101. Um, if it's much more than that, um, they have a temperature. If they're very stiff all over, they start sneezing, they don't eat, um, they have bleeding gums, they may even have seizures. Some um, vaccination results uh, result in seizures. So if you have a pet that um, has a lot of seizures, um, do not vaccinate them at all anymore. Um, then uh, you may want to do a real detox also on the animal. And for that, I encourage you to uh, work with a holistic vet or with a homeopath that does animals um, because, um, you know, you want to do this right. But many, many animals that have seizures, uh, that... Uh, that is a result of vaccination, over-vaccination. And sometimes it's not even an over-vaccination. It is sometimes just the vaccination just triggered something that uh, made the animal very ill. Uh, especially cats are very susceptible to that. They, get, they can get asthma and I've I've seen cats that really are to the point of where they could hardly hardly breathe every every day they would have um, big uh, occurrences of where they would really struggle to breathe and then when I found out of when the animal was last vaccinated what the vaccinations were and so on, we found then to say, mm, that may be a result of the vaccinations. And uh, the distemper um, vaccination uh, is especially prone to, um, uh, you know, respiratory problems in animals. Um, and dog vaccination may appear to prompt also autoimmune diseases like arthritis. Um, and arthritis uh, is especially serious in larger dogs. And you see that often that when I was, when I was growing up, we never had dogs that had these hip problems that they have now. Uh, we've always had animals, you know, and we never had a dog that had these hip problems. But then again, they were not re vaccinated like once or twice, maybe, you know, most often not. Um, so uh, these, uh, when the antigens uh, are introduced into uh, the body, it is possible that it might not nudge the immune system into making antibodies as it was intended to, but making then um, attacking the immune system. And that is an autoimmune system disease. Instead, it might alter white or red blood cells. This in turn might cause the immune system not to recognize its own cells. This sets the stage for autoimmune problems. And um, that often is when um, animals are, when they get older and they are vaccinated and vaccinated and vaccinated. And the vaccinations were intended to do good. I mean, they were not intended to, um, to harm our animals. But over the last few dec decades, um, animal vaccines have become a multi-billion dollar industry. This is now a big business for the veterinarians, as I have said. And so be careful, question your veterinarian. Do we really have to 
see that the vet, you have to pay for it anyway. You go in and you're paying one way or the other. But when I go and I would, I would rather than just say, hey, let's just see if my animal really needs it. Let's draw some blood, see if there are any titers, if there are any remnants of the vaccination. And um, if you go to a holistic vet, he will agree with you. And if it's an older, uh, older animal, I wouldn't even, you know, I would just, hey, you know, live. And cats, and here's, here's the thing that I really, that puzzled me to no end. I have clients who have cats that are only indoors. They never get out. Yet once a year, they take them to the vet for the vaccination. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just, I'm just like, what? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Well, the vet said I should. Yep. And I'm like, I, that, it makes no sense. You know, it makes no sense. And it's just not, you know, these little tiny dogs that people have now that are never in the woods. They are, they, I mean, they caught them around in, in little strollers. They keep them in their bag. And most of the time they, they are inside the house. Yet, once a year, they go and have these animals vaccinated. So let's keep it where it should to vaccinate yes it depends on the animal it depends on wh how what type of animal it is what the animal is using if i have a hunting dog that is out there and chasing um ducks and and raccoons and what have you well yeah i'm going to vaccinate that dog uh, every year, I probably would, after four or five va vaccinations, I probably would call it quit also. But um, I would definitely vaccinate. But if I have an animal that is predominantly under my care, I know where the, where the animal goes, cat or dog. I know the animal's, animal is usually in the house even if they go out a little bit. Does that make sense? Do you have, you know, to vaccinate them against everything? Now, we, I have two outdoor cats that um, run around uh, outside, and I live in the woods, and yeah, will there be stray cats with uh, distemper or with, with um, other uh, or rabies or whatever? Yeah. They get vaccinated. They, I go to the vet and say, listen, you give that cat a five-year shot. If you don't have it, please order it. And I have done with it. And that's it. But that's my choice. But please do remember that all the vaccinations, Keep them at the bare minimum when you you know, when your pet is younger, up to five years. Strive for the best health that you can give your animal naturally with excellent food, some supplements. A dog in good health or a cat in good health has such a powerful immune system that they will look and good and feel good and they will live a good long life. My animals usually live, my German Shepherd lived to be 16 and uh, that is a very ripe old age for a German Shepherd. Uh, ca my cats usually are in their 20s, late 20s before they, we finally call it quits. Uh, my horses live to be 40s, beginning 40s. And because we, 
keep it in a manageable form. We, I, we use common sense. I don't, like I said before, do not stress your animals overly with all these vaccinations. And one thing I would like to say, because even though it is not really a vaccination, but the heartworm medicine that we do give to animals, which is a form of vaccination, it's an oral vaccination. Heartworm is really only a problem if the dog or the cat gets stung. Well, cats really don't, don't get heartworm as much though. Um, if the dog gets stung by a mosquito, the mosquitoes carry heartworm. Now, so if you have a long haired dog and my, my pets, by the way, never get shaven. You know, I have a little poodle as I've shown you, and I have a little, um, also a um, Maltese poo uh, that also gets trimmed. And my, my uh, puppy young, well, he never gets trimmed. You know, he, he has beautiful long hair. And so if you have your, let the hair grow on your animal. I know that many people have them groomed like every month or every two months. Not a good idea, not a good idea at all because they do need that here. Rather brush them and comb them so that they don't get matted. Um, but if they don't get stung, why give them the heart uh, uh, medicine, the heartworm medicine? Um, we also have found that the heartworm medicine, that pill that you give, doesn't really work that well. It doesn't. Uh, if an animal should should get heartworm because the immune system is low, they are elderly, they're sick. Usually, then they do get uh, they can get heartworm uh, if they get stung by a mosquito, and the system cannot fend it off right away. Um, you know, I mean. The heartworm medication does not prevent that really in reality. I've done a lot of research on that. Please do your own research on it. Read up on it. Don't take what I say as gospel either. Do some research. I'd love to hear from all of you. And please give me some feedback how you like the show. Uh, you, call in. This uh, uh, Kathy saying, do you feel dogs need annual <clears throat> dentals, like de teeth cleaning? Uh, well, I don't know if I would do that an annual. Uh, if you feed a raw diet, your dogs will not have um, any tartar on their, on their, and give them a bone once in a while. They will clean their own teeth. Um, uh, an annual teeth cleaning, I would not. No, I would not do. An older dog that is fed predominantly um, pedigree or any of these other dry foods or or these canned foods, um, well, I would say every two three years, do a checkup, see how the how the teeth are, give it a cleaning. You can brush. The, your dog's teeth too. You don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah. And I have done that. My little poodle that you just saw, he came and he was, he had, he still has, his mouth is still horrible. Well, the dentist wanted to pull all of the teeth. I said, oh no, we're not going to do that. We are definitely not going to do that. We're going to see that he keeps it because, you know, we can't make dentures for dogs. <laughs> so, uh, they need their teeth to eat, you know. Yep. And because if they don't, if they don't use their teeth to to chunk the food down, you know, they often get um, gastro gastritis. They get um, they get stomach problems. They get colon problems. Um, 
it's not a good idea to pull teeth on an animal. And many times when uh, you go for a cleaning, the dog has to give be given a shot to stay calm. Right. To, Otherwise, he'll bite you. Mm -hmm. To go right? under. Yeah, they put them under. Yeah. Now, do you think that that is a good idea no. to put your dog under once a year? That anesthesia is more damaging to the system of an animal than that little bit of tartar that uh, stays on their teeth. There is a question about yeah, what, what you said about a bone. You said a real bone? Yeah, a real bone. Not this, this other garbage, these, these green bones and all of this stuff. Do not know because they have found that um, dogs got very ill from those. No, don't. A real bone, depending on the size of the dog, that's the size of the bone. I go and I buy neck bones raw, and I use them raw. I do them raw. I buy neck bones, and once a week or once every two weeks, everybody gets a neck bone. Mm. Because they're small, my animals, so these bones are small. But if they are raw, they don't splinter. If they're cooked, don't give them cooked bone because they can splinter. So we don't want to do that, and certainly not chicken bone. Chicken bones are definitely a no-no. What about we a bigger all... dog? A bigger dog, a big maw bone, is just, he'll, he'll just be in heaven, you know. Uh, have the butcher cut it in, in several slices okay. so that the the dog can get at the maw, too, because the maw is very, very good for your dogs. No. Of course, too. And don't, and don't cook it. Don't cook it, no. Have it raw. And they love it raw. Yeah. At first, if they've, never, if they've never experienced it, at first they would be a little like, what's that? But once they start tasting it, once they get the taste, they're... You'll see they go wild for it, you know. Yeah. Um, feed them, feed them. Uh, also, tripe, you know, heart. Those kind of things, um, especially heart, very, very good for for dogs. Yeah. Beef heart, and you can buy that. It's not that expensive. In fact. I since I've been feeding, uh, I mean, my dogs don't get anything. Um, uh, you know, really, that is made, except that uh, food that is raw, that is prepared, because I don't um, always have the time to um, go and buy fresh. You shouldn't be keeping, uh, you know, ground meat for days in the refrigerator. Um, it's not good for you, and it's not good for the animals either. So they like it, and they won't eat it either. They are really rather spoiled. So, <laughs> yeah. so they, um, it, if it's not fresh, they won't eat it, you know. But the, it, it's really relatively cheap. It's cheaper, really, in reality, to feed that way, and it's easier once you get used to it. It's just a way of changing, changing the habits, you know, to. Um, and getting into the groove of uh, feeding them. But, you know, if any I have never seen a dog that didn't like, and do not feed them milk bones and this kind of stuff. Uh, that just really puts the powder onto the teeth. Interesting. It really does. Yeah. No, don't do that. Okay? Well, um, before, before you sign off, let me just tell you, this week I had to take one of our dogs to the vet for their rabies shot yeah now their way of doing it no we have to do an examination before we do it mm -hmm. and they did an examination and they checked the uh blood and they checked the to make a long story short for that one shot that we went it was 289 of course yeah of course that's how it's they make money started. yeah that's, let's bolster the thing. Now, you know what? A shot for, they buy these shots for $2.50. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Even less in most cases. Okay? They charge you 
15 20 dollars for the shot mm -hmm. now that's not enough money anymore of course they have to now because now the protocol says see because they all know that you should not vaccinate an, a dog or a pet that is ill mm -hmm. they know that oh so, so that's now, why they do it oh of course they do know that but you know what you know when your pet is ill. Yep, that's true. You don't have to, you don't have to, you know, what is this? Prevention? Now we are we are doing prevention for our pets too. I mean, I don't even go for for physicals because I know when I'm sick. You know, I don't need I don't need a doctor to tell me I'm sick. Mm -hmm. So and you know when your animal is sick. So, uh, you know, use that, use common sense. But use it is, sense. it is prevention though. It's not preve really. No, no, no. It's prevention of their bank account getting depleted. Of course, of course. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Guys, it was fun being with you again. Uh, please, um, you know, let me know, like I said, how you like the show, uh, what you would like to hear. Um, I would like to uh, continue next week eh, on Friday. Uh, we're going to meet together right here at seven o'clock. And I hope uh, you all are listening again and uh, tell me how you like, uh, like it. Okay. Bye for now. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Health In with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam with NCBBI members, The Tanya Love Show, Your Healthy Pet with Gisela DiCarlo. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by Atomus.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. CarolinaApparel.com and DeltaForce.net.